so you were uh you did a little bit of a thing this week, didn't you? You have to narrow that down. <laughs> you were on a podcast, weren't you? I was. I was on the Retail Rant podcast. Um, it's on iTunes, and they have an app, but it's only for Android, so I can't use it because I, I I got an iPhone. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, but I have iTunes, so I download it on iTunes. Um, it's uh, it's a really funny podcast about all the woes of working in retail. Um, guy who does it is really really funny, and this week I was a guest. Yay. Yay. All right. Okay. You want to sit down? <laughs> you, finally, you finally submit to it. Oh, let me leave me the fuck alone. Oh, big sigh. I know. Your life is so hard. Oh. Nobody loves you. Um, so, yeah, if you look for the retail rant on iTunes or whatever podcasting apparatus you use. Apparatus? And I am on there this week. You say apparatus, and I think of, of like gears and, and pulleys and chains and steam pipes on things. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good landing. She, she, she fucked off. Yeah. We got her little stairs to help her get in and out of the bed because she her, her landings aren't what they used to be. Aww. Trouble is, she's really, really into her routines. And she will only go up one side of the bed and down the other. She goes up Dan's side of the bed and goes down my side of the bed. And we only have stairs on the down side of the bed. She walks up the other side of the bed and howls to be picked up. So we got to get stairs for that side now. <laughs> Is that what going to be with you one day, Grady? I'm going to have to get stairs for the bed. Oy. But yes, I did the podcast and you should download it and... uh it's funny, and you should listen to it every week. Yeah. Okay. Stuff. Okay. Well, now let's get to less pleasant things. It's time to do the nonsense. Less pleasant things than working in retail? That's... Well, there, there is actually probably another career that's probably worse. That, amazingly enough, there is one that is worse than working in retail. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first, the intro. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here. A segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And we're going to start off briefly this, this week with... I'm crazy. <laughs> You know, you done fucked up. I think that that's a good, good pair to start with this. Um, this week, the White House Correspondence Center happened. There was all sorts of, you know, nerd, they call it nerd prom. I loathe it because it represents an intersection between politics and, and media, which is far too cozy for my liking. Um, but while everyone was paying attention to that, other people weren't paying attention to this how not to get away with robbery come on come over here over you know get get off the fucking oh you fucker are you talking to your cat or your computer no i would not i would not call grady oh you fucker he is you little shit it's different he is you little shit the computer is oh you fucker see i got this down how not to get away with robbery hop the White House fence. The White House was briefly locked down Tuesday after a man jumped the fence alongside the Eisenhower Executive Office Building, White House facility where presidential staffers work. Secret Service officers quickly detained the man, not before he suffered a cut to his finger. Oh, poor thing. Um, the As White House canines team and armed Secret Service agents gathered on the North Lawn, um... The reporters inside the White House were kept inside. The man apparently was trying to leave the scene of a crime and his escape route. Wait, he jumped in? He's trying to run away from the scene of a crime. So his means of trying to escape was he hopped the fence onto the White House lawn. Not like he stole some from the White House and no. jumped the fence to escape. No. Like he entered the White House? Well, well no. the White House property? Yes. He's running from the cops and he hopped onto the White House lawn. That's a good way to get shot. I know! 
What the, the fuck? Secret Service doesn't so much fuck around. Why are, well, why are you running from the cops near the White House to begin with? That would seem like the worst place to commit any sort of crime is anywhere in the vicinity of the White House. Unless, you know, you're in the White House. I Hi, know, Nixon. Because if um, it's the night of the correspondence dinner, all the security is going to be concentrated on that shit. Bullshit. Bullshit. E they'll have security at the White House Correspondence Center, but there'll still be people at the fucking White House. I mean, yeah, they're not going to clear the place out. Like, I, oh, uh, the president's supposed to give the commencement address at Rutgers University, which is about a mile from where I live. So on the one hand, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. On the other hand, I'm like, fuck, traffic's going to be insane. Yep. Fuck, you're not going to see home for a day. Because, like, Rutgers is not near the highway. Just camp in your car. It's in the middle of fucking suburbia. You're, so you're fucked. Driving around this area is going to be insane that weekend. I just, it's, it's, this is so out of the frying pan into the fucking armed secret service agents who have fucking machine guns. Yeah. Like you, you go and get caught. And we all know the only way to avoid get to, to to bypass White House security is to be a toddler. That's the only way you can you can avoid White House security. I mean, that's what you do. You put the contraband you've stolen onto a toddler and throw that toddler over the White House fence. And he'll get right through security. And like, then you have no problem. Yes. They they won't even notice. They right. won't. <sighs> Yeah, it's why is assume it's one of the toddlers that White House staff routinely steals and lets roam the grounds. White House uh, Wise Guy 288 says, uh, and low yakety sacks did play from on high. That does seem like it should, a thing that should happen. You know, I can foresee an app in the future. Like, did he maybe not know what fence he was jumping? It's kind of hard to miss. It's a big White House, Tara. With it's a big, big property, though. Yeah, with, with if, the... if you're not coming in from the front, I I imagine it's possible to just think you're hopping a random ass fence. That's a pretty, yeah, that, you know. I, I'm reaching, but I'm trying to find some logic in this decision. I can foresee a future where there's an app that's just included on every cell phone that whenever you're about to do something incredibly stupid, yakety stack starts playing out, out of your pocket. Did you see the new app The Rock released today? No. The Rock has his own alarm clock app now. And you can set it to wake you up when The Rock wakes up, but The Rock wakes up at like four in the morning. So don't do that. Um, but there's all different alarms you can set. Hang on. What are you doing? I'm trying to find some of them. Uh, okay. Here we go. Okay. Get your ass out of bed. Then there's... Beep, 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 beep. I can do this all morning. Beep, beep, beep. Um, I'm trying to remember the ones that have him actually. Jabroni. So you can set any of these as your wake up. Um, there is no snooze button. It's the Rock doesn't really believe in a snooze button. Um, if you want to wake up every day at the same time as The Rock, you can set that as an auto function, but he gets up at like four in the morning. So, yeah. No. So it's called, what's it called? I don't, hang on. You're so it's prepared, called Rock Tara. Clock. Rock Clock. Uh, so if you want the best uh, alarm clock app ever... There you go. So I was talking when we started about the job that's worse than retail, arguably. And I would say that Maggot would be scraper. teaching. For lots of reasons. 
I don't know, because you can be emotionally fulfilled by teaching. Yes, but you know what you can't do? Say the word vagina. West Michigan substitute teacher fired for using anatomical word during lesson. If you ask Allison Witt why she was fired from Harper Creek Middle School, she will tell you it's because she uttered the word vagina. Yes, I did say that word, and I was saying it in the context of art history. I wasn't being vulgar. Substitute art teacher claims she said it to a room full of eighth graders trying to explain historical interpretations of Georgia O'Keeffe paintings. But to school officials went across the line and violated school policy. What policy? Um, I think it's... The it's uh, down here later. Okay, Qu quote from the school handbook indicating teachers are required to get an advanced approval when discussing any form of reproductive health. So, saying the word vagina, you have to get permission before you say the any proper form of reproductive <clears throat> health. Are you kidding me? Uh, do we just want teen pregnancy to run rampant? Apparently, well, STDs. Where the hell else are you going to get all those low information voters, Tara? <sighs> Is this a public school? Yes. Oh my god. You know what? It's and it's completely Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Lebowski quote vagina. I'm mad about this. It's not funny. Yeah, it's it's completely legitimate in terms of discussing George O'Keefe to say the word vagina because she was painting To be really fair, you're probably actually looking for the word labia. Labia, yeah, well that that would probably count too. But I can get, like, there. there is a large percentage of people that think that vagina is the plurality of the area down there. And it's not. But, you know. Yeah, if you're discussing George O'Keefe, that's, I mean. You can't really avoid it. It's yeah. right there. Yeah. I mean, it, it, unless you've never seen one. But if you look at George O'Keefe paintings, right now people are fur fur furiously Googling George O'Keefe going, what? Is she supposed to say hoo-ha? Bajingo? Like this is- Your lady flower. This call is it, fucking Call it grade. your lady flower. By the time flower. I was in eighth grade, I had taken two years of mandatory health class where they teach you about the reproductive system. Mm -hmm. And they show really stupid movies made in the 70s about how masturbation is okay. <sighs> and you watch The Miracle of Life and at least two girls run out of the room to throw up. And <laughs> eighth grade, by eighth grade, I had taken two years of this class. These are eighth graders who are not allowed to have a grown-up say an anatomical word to them? Only in the context of a approved sexual education course. Anywhere else in the building, you cannot say vagina. Presumably, you can't say penis as well. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if that was not the case. Probably not. Probably because not. America has a big old fucking problem with vaginas. They do. We goddamn love penises. We got a Big old problem with vaginas. Oh. Like, apparently we just want teenage pregnancy and STDs to take over America. We're voting for one for the Republican nominee for president. He's well, a yeah. walking STD. Well, yes, like I said, where else do you think they get low information voters? Yeah, I guess. In 20 years, they'll be handing over their campaign donations like clockwork. That's just how they work. You got to make you got to make more more poppers. That's just how it works. Like, that's just I, I, I'm not even offended. I'm sad because you're fucking these kids up. Yep. You're, you're teaching them that there's a stigma around genitals 
You right. should only ever talk about your genitals when a grown-up approves of it. Right, and that you have no need to learn about them. No, they're horrible things. Or the proper care and maintenance thereof. You need approval before you examine your own genitals. That's... Talk to disservice. Talk to someone in authority before you even acknowledge the fact that you have something in your crotch. <sighs> well, we have more. Oh, we've got more shenanigans from the classroom. Because uh, speaking of making decisions based in ignorance, oh, it, th I could argue this is a little bit worse because this involved law enforcement. Lunchroom lunacy. Cops investigate $2 bill spent on schoolroom lunch. What? Um, 13-year-old 8th grader Denisha Neal at Fort Bend Independent School uh, District's Krista McAuliffe Middle School took to eat lunch of chicken tenders with her classmates using a $2 bill given to her by a grandmother. She was stopped by the long arm of the law. I uh, went to the lunch line. They said my $2 bill was fake. They gave it to the police. They sent me to the police office. A police officer said I would be in big trouble. All because... No, $2 bills are a thing that fucking exists. Yes, but no adult in the vicinity was aware of the fact that $2 bills are a real thing. This is a school. Yes. That's a real thing. It's legal tender. It, they're not common. I don't even know if they print them anymore. But they're a thing. It, they exist. So it's every, money. every and teach... And you know what? You know what's even sadder? Even if you don't know a $2 bill is a thing, they're really easy ways to check whether or not money's real. You hold it up to the light, and every bill printed in the United States has a little magnetic strip. Including a $2 bill. That tells you it's goddamn real. They're all printed on cotton, not paper. So they have little red and blue threads interwoven into the cotton to tell you it's fucking real. They're really easy ways to check if a bill is real. Probably somewhere in your school there's a counterfeit pen. Yeah. So what happened was a swath of adults, all of them educators, a principal... And law enforcement, every adult in the vicinity, all of them failed to realize that $2 bills were a real thing. And threatened and harassed this student over it. 13 years old. Threatened to send her to jail. I'm not going to I'm not going to go off on a thing. I'm just going to point out that she has a relatively ethnic sounding name. And I don't know if that would have happened to me. With my name. What, what, Tara, are you saying because it's, it's, it's potentially because she might be of a different race that she was harassed? Or is that what you're potentially suggesting? I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. Wouldn't want to get political. That is a really bad school. And, yeah. I, and it makes me even sadder because I'm such a big fan of Krista McAuliffe and all she did. Also, yeah. anybody in the school have Google? I know, right? Here, here, watch this. I'm going to do a trick for you. Right. Okay, Google. Are $2 bills actual legal tender? Look, results. Yes. It was that fucking simple. That took me a whopping three seconds. 13 years old, centered. This is why they're not allowed to say vagina. <sighs> if, it, if it were me, I'd be calling motherfuckers cocksuckers at this point. Like, you know what? You're, you, you should not be teaching children about their, their genitals because you don't understand how money works. Like, maybe now I get the last story. I'm not allowed to say vagina, but can I call you a cocksucker? Because... <laughs> You know, just maybe. Um, Jesus, fuck. Let's move on to some other stuff. It's just going to make us all frustrated and sad. Um, neither snow nor nor what is it? How does it go? Neither sleet nor snow, nor gloom nor of dark night. of night will stop the U.S. mail. But you know what Something will? Like that, Godzilla. Nope. Johnny Walker. 
Oh. Minnetonka police, drunk mail carrier crashes into sign, registers nearly 0.30% blood alcohol content. Okay, well, this is Canada, right? Yeah. But still. So that's not, that's, they don't, they don't even have that slogan there. Well, no, I don't think it's Canada. Because it's not the U.S. Postal Service. No, no it's in Minnesota. Minnetonka, sure? Minnesota. Yes, it does. I thought the Star Tribune was. Read, read down. All right. Okay, fine. It's you Minnesota. Know. All right. I was right. Mary E. Sweet registered a blood alcohol level of 0.297. Uh, preliminary breath test at the scene late Friday morning. She was jailed and charged with third degree drunken driving. Sweet, right, during her route, Sweet turned onto Clear Spring Road near a public library and crashed into a stop sign. Well, at least she stopped. Yeah. I don't know if it was on purpose. <laughs> she was not hurt. Sweet failed the field sobriety test before having a blood alcohol level measured at nearly four times the legal limit in Minnesota. Wow. I mean, it could have been worse. She could have gotten really, really baked on marijuana and eaten everybody's edible arrangements. Well, no, what I could honestly see what was ha being happened is if you're drunk as a male driver, just be like, ah, oh, fuck it, you, you, whatever it is. What's this? Happy birthday. I don't know. I'm fuck <laughs> just, the, just, Why don't you just take all the mail? You get all the mail today. And have a party, I'm, distribute it, get to know your neighbors. You, you you do that, I'm going to go home. You get all the mail. You, you are the mail guy. You are my guy. You get maybe, all the, I'm maybe, go home. Maybe she was really, really upset about Prince. <laughs> That's where you went? Minnesota. <laughs> That's where you went. Maybe she was like sending off Prince Irish Wake style. And just happen to be on the job. <laughs> you don't, don't, why? That, uh, 0.30 is not a small amount. That's. That's right, Dodger. This is what it sounds like when mail workers cry. Oh. When postal stop. workers cry? Stop. I don't know. I don't think. I don't four, think that scans right. Four times the legal limit. That's a lot of booze, dude. That's why. Every time I read something like that, I'm like, how are you not dead? Like, how is your liver not blown up like a sponge and you're just desperately trying to exit your body? I don't know. I don't, I don't drink that much anymore. <laughs> you need to show Dan and I last week. It was, have you ever heard of Reverend Peyton's big damn band? No. It's actually not a very big band. There's three people in it. There's, there's a... The, there's Reverend Peyton who plays guitar and bass on the same guitar. He do, can play like two melodies with two hands. It's amazing. His wife plays a washboard and then his brother-in-law plays the drums. They had at the place, I didn't really like any of the beers they had on tap. So I ordered what was called the rum punch. This bartender, motherfucker, took out a pint glass, put some ice in it. 50% two different kinds of rum went into like this glass was half. He just took two different kinds of rum halfway up. And then threw some fucking juice in it. It was delicious. <laughs> By like one and a sip of a second, I was fucked up. Like that thing where you turn your head and then you feel your head turn a minute later. Yep. Yeah. Unique in the channel is like, uh, Mor Mor Morty, listen, listen, Morty. We got to uh, We got to deliver the mail, Morty. We gotta gotta deliver the mail. Okay. Uh, uh geez, Rick, I don't know. We gotta deliver the mail, Morty. Morty, mail must go through. That's what we gotta do. Mail must go through Morty. Uh what? Now it's time for some just general all-purpose stupidity. Because, you know, we, a bit of a palate cleanser. Yeah. Um I I love how criminals attempt to run from the cops like to the white house yeah 
Maybe well, that dude was like going for the pardon right away. <laughs> Obama! Help me out, man. Help me out. Help me out, bro. Yo, bro. Help him, bro. But what's even weirder is when they try to hide from the cops because that's when shenanigans begin. Woman arrested after falling through ceiling of big lots. Oh, and look at this mug shot. Yeah, she she know she knows what she did. She she knows. I'm not sure she does. I'm not sure she even knows where she. That woman is thirty. Yeah. God damn. Amanda Chandler, 30, was charged Thursday with second-degree burglary after police say they found her rummaging through the cash register at Big Lots in the middle of the night. All right, starting off, number one, we both worked retail. What's in the cash register after closing, Tara? Fuck all. Absolutely fucking lutely nothing. All the money goes either in a bank pouch and gets taken to the bank, or it goes into a safe. Yep. There is nothing. If the doors are closed or locked, there is nothing in the cash register. Maybe you'll find some gum. Or some pencil erasers and paper clips and rubber bands. Why was that? Did you Was that the same experience with you? When I worked retail, every cash register, every time I ever looked in a cash register, had sticks of gum, rubber bands, paper clips, and pencils. Every single sticks one. Sticks of gum. Rubber bands and paper clips you get because the bank uses that to bind up singles. Oh. They count out 100 and then whatever they have on them, they either rubber band them or paper clip them. And the pencils? See, that I don't know. So I learned something. I, I just really want to reiterate, this woman is nine years younger than me. Mm. Now, but it gets even worse. Officer noticed the window was broken near the entrance. Uh, officer saw a woman, later identified as Chandler, standing toward the front of the business looking through a cash register. The officer shined a flashlight at Chandler. She ducked down and ran to the back of the business. Once she reached the back of the business, Chandler climbed into the ceiling, then fell through the ceiling into the women's restroom. How do you climb into the ceiling? You know, you've got those panels up above. You just sort of push one aside and jump up. Yeah, they're not very strong, as I guess we learned. That's one of those things I, I always used to want to do when I was in, in school, like grade school. I saw those panels above the ceiling, and I always thought, I wonder what's up there. Dust and pipes. And yeah, but wait, when you're seven, you look up and it's like there's a magical science fiction adventure land up there. And spider nests. Yeah, you don't think about it, But in reality, you're like, oh, God, everything's I used, horrible. I used to work in an office where big jumping wolf spiders had a nest in the light fixture right above my desk. So every time people, would, <sighs> the guys would come and change the light bulbs, it would fucking rain spiders on me for days. Abstruse in the channel. Damn it, Lou! She fell into the women's restroom. By state law, we can't enter there because we're mailing her on her birth certificate. Oh. oh. So it was actually a good getaway plan. Oh shit, son. Oh shit. But 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 that's none of my business. <laughs> I wonder if you could use that as defense. Mm -hmm. Like, just run to... The, I wonder if that makes, like, the ladies' restroom now, like, fucking safe. Like, in hide-and-seek. <laughs> nope. Home base. Home base! Kick you them in here. in here, penis haver. <laughs> That's the law. Uh, finally tonight, Tara, I know I always ask you this, and you always say no. So I'm just going to expect when I ask you this, you're going to say no again. Whenever I ask you if you've seen a movie, you've never seen the movie. Have you ever seen The Gods Must Be Crazy? No. I'm fucking psychic. <laughs> Dan, can you hear me? You're going to get yelled at about a movie I haven't seen. The Gods Must Be Crazy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird movie. Dan's seen it! There you go. Dan says it's a weird movie. The gods if Dan must... says that, 
It's a weird fucking movie. The gods He's a must, weird fucking guy. The Gods Must Be Crazy is one of those movies where it's like, that could never happen in real life. What's it about? Well, you're about to find out because it happened in real life. Oh. Kinda. An angel locals believed fell from the sky, turned out to be a sex toy. This used to be a an urban legend about a guy dressed as Jesus with a bunch of blow-up dolls and some lady thought it was the rapture because all his blow-up dolls blew away. Well, this actually happened. Jakarta, Indonesia. Small village in Indonesia was excited after what they believed to be an angel from heaven was found on a beach at Bangai Regency. Only to find out the human-like figure they fussed about was a sex toy. A life-size inflatable sex doll was found by 21-year-old official. Inflatable was found by a 21-year-old fisherman days after the solar eclipse that engulfed Indonesia. For many in the world's most populous Muslim-majority country, the solar eclipse was viewed as a spiritual experience. Large numbers flocked to mosques to say special prayers. Thinking it was an angel, the fisherman took the doll home to his village, where it was taken care of like a real human being. Now, I know there is, biblically speaking, there's a lot of different types of angels. Most angels don't look like people. No, like, yeah. There's ones that are made entirely out of eyes. Yeah, I know. The that have like... Lion's sets, heads, lion yeah, head, and, and a bear six, head. Sets of wings made of fire. Like, if you actually do some research on what angels look like, they sound fucking terrifying, and you wouldn't want to meet one. They, they're like some cthulhu nightmare. Yes! Yes, I was about to say, a Lovecraftian nightmare, yeah. But I'm pretty sure nowhere in any religious text is there an angel that is inflatable <laughs> and makes this face. <laughs> and has insertion holes. Village Buzz caught the attention of local police who then went to visit the so-called angel. Only then did everyone discover it was an inflatable doll. No, because you touched it. You picked it up. You fished it out of the ocean, which means you probably had to reinflate it. No, they didn't. They, they, they were caring for it as it slowly deflated. I don't understand how you can be fooled by this. I don't either. I did check, though. It came from an actual media source. I checked on this one. I had to go through Google Translate, too, which was really a mess. But I checked. No, guys, that's not going to be the thumbnail. Because the thumbnail, the screen cap, comes from when there's just two of us on the screen and not a story on yeah. the side. Duh. I is I, is is. Yeah, I don't understand how this fooled anybody. This kind of goes back to the beginning about the whole sex ed thing. Y yeah. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Maybe not that I think they should teach blow-up dolls. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a bit much. How do you tell if your date is a blow-up doll? Okay, fair. It could be a different religion that has different types of angels. <laughs> I am not well-schooled in every world religion, but I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to put myself out there and I look forward to your comments and say that I'm pretty sure no religion in the world features an angelic celestial being that's inflatable and has insertion holes. I'm just going to take a stab and guess that that's the truth. Maybe Pastafarians. Maybe. Maybe Pastafarians. Maybe. That's, but that, I guess. That's being generous. That I'm right about that. So I, I guess the, the first thing we, 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 we learned this week is um, your deities are not inflated. Oh, God. You know what just popped into my head and I can't get it out now? Your own inflatable... <laughs> Jesus. I did both stop. You can love God. <laughs> you shouldn't try to love God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Like apparently just looking at them melts your eyeball. So think about what that's going to do to your uh, nooks and crannies. It's not going to be fun. We've learned that hide and seek is all fun and games till someone falls through the ceiling. Or winds up in the White House garden. Yeah. Michelle well, Obama does not fuck around with her radishes, you guys. Don't don't play Red Rover on the White House lawn. She will fuck you up. You mess up her vegetables. Although now you know what I, I'm I'm thinking when when I when when I am if I ever like get to like ninety or something and get diagnosed they're like you're gonna die in six weeks. You know the first thing I'm doing I'm going to the White House. I'm hopping the fence and I'm yelling Red Rover, Red Rover, just to see what will fucking happen. You'll get <laughs> shot. Exactly, but god damn it'll be hilarious. Which I guess, you know, is better than dying slowly of some debilitating disease. <laughs> exactly. You know what? Let's go out going out with a bang. Um We've learned that drinking and driving don't mix. And especially don't mix with the male. No. How are you even gonna find everybody on the on your fucking route? You can't drive in a straight line? We've learned that an entire school full of educators, adults, computers, and books are not able to determine the fact that there is such a thing as a $2 bill. I mean, thank God she didn't bring in a Sacagawea dollar. <sighs> Would have had some real fucking problems. And finally, we learned this week that in the hallowed halls of education, there is nothing more terrible than acknowledging the fact that people have genitals. Yeah. Vagina. 